If I'm a Nebraska fan, this really, and I mean really concerns me because Casey Thompson was a good quarterback, but now he's leaving. And last year, y'all had a good quarterback and you sucked, but now you're just going to suck and you have no quarterback. I thought Casey Thompson and Matt Rule were a match made in heaven, but I've changed my mind. This is the actual match made in heaven. This is the perfect fit. One of my absolute favorites, and I mean one of my favorite teams to keep up with and watch during college football season is Nebraska. And I know, I know, I know what you're sitting there saying, Matt, Nebraska, why do you care to watch their games? Why do you care to keep up with them? They suck. And yeah, just hear me out though. To answer the question, why I like keeping up with them, why I like watching them, it's very simple and it's for one reason only. It is so funny to watch them lose. That's it. It is so funny to watch Nebraska sell out their stadium, hype up their season year after year, and watch them go four and eight, three and nine. It's just so funny to me. There's something so fulfilling about it, watching these fans hype up and try to tell me, Matt, Scott Frost, he's gonna turn it around. And I tried telling y'all the past three years, the guy's a bum, and yeah, I was right. But anyways, that's besides the point. The point is they've officially moved on from Scott Frost. They're on to a new guy. He goes by the name of Matt Rule. I like Matt Rule. I like him a lot. I think he fits well at Nebraska. He's a great offensive-minded head coach, and he's good with quarterbacks. But unfortunately for Nebraska fans and Matt Rule here, his starting quarterback has just left. If you don't know who I'm referring to or talking about, I'm talking about Casey Thompson. And I think some people in the comments are going to try to say, well, Matt, it wasn't for sure that Casey Thompson was going to start this year. And that's just how I feel. I think he would have won the starting job again. Because the other guy he was competing against, Jeff Sims at Georgia Tech, he only had five touchdowns to three interceptions last year. And also, Jeff Sims had a quarterback rating of 44. Casey Thompson was way better. We'll speak on that a little later. What we're here to talk about and dive into is, okay, Casey Thompson's leaving, but where is he going to go? We're going to talk all about that because it's looking like we're starting to see some leads here. But also, we're going to take a look at the top 10 prospects and players for the 2024 NFL Draft. The new rankings have come out, and some players you're going to expect to see on this list, like Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., but some other players... It may just shock you. I always think it's cool to see these lists and look far ahead because by this time next year, we're going to look at this list again and go, how in the crap did we have this guy going in the top 10? We're going to check that out and also take a little look at some transfer portal news going on. It's going to be a jam-packed video. Get your snack, get your popcorn. As always, if you like college football content and you're not subscribed, consider joining our amazing community. By the way, shout out to everybody that has already subscribed. Love you guys. All right, Matt. Blah, blah, blah. Crap, blah, 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 blah. Let's get into it. First things first, I do want to bring this up. Not the biggest deal in the world, but I had a couple people send it to me, so we'll talk about it real briefly here. Auburn wide receiver Landon King has re-entered the portal for the second time. I believe this is in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say January, but it's the second time since November. He's a very young wide receiver who hasn't exactly proven himself, and I guess that's what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to go to a new school and prove himself. Simple as that. But the question I've had a lot of people send me is, Matt, why is this guy leaving? He's young. He probably would have started or played a lot at Auburn. I mean, what's going on? And my logical explanation of that is Landon King either A, wasn't going to start, or B, he's concerned about the Auburn quarterback situation, which, <laughs> a little foreshadowing, we'll talk about that in just a second as well. You can come up with whatever conspiracy theory you want, bottom line is, he's gone. Where he will go, I have no idea whatsoever, because you're not going to see an Alabama, you're not going to see a Georgia go after this kid. I would expect some smaller D1 school to go after him, but hey, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving along here to our second topic, the way, and I mean way, 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 way too early top 10 players for the 2024 NFL Draft. They've came out. I'm just going to go from top to bottom, and we'll work our way down, and we'll talk about them along the way. Number one, obvious, Kayla Williams, quarterback for USC, no explanation needed. Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake May, Brock Bowers, Olu Fashionanu, uh, Fashion, I don't know how to say that, Penn State offensive tackle, then another offensive tackle, Joe Alt from Notre Dame, then... Uh, I don't know. I've never even heard of this guy. Jared Verse, Florida State. He was a zero-star recruit. Nine sacks last season. That one kind of shocks me. Then, I think most people know this. Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback from Alabama. Five-star recruit. The dude is a beast. Shut down. Another Alabama player right behind him. Dallas Turner. Pretty much a similar build to Will Anderson. Edge rusher. And then last but not least, we got good old Quinn Ewers. Interesting list. I would go out on a limb here and say it's a B plus or A minus list. A lot of these guys you see right here, they will be drafted in the top 10 next year. The one thing I have a question about, and you guys are probably questioning as well, is Matt, is this list in order from 1 to 10? And I don't think it is. Maybe it is though, but I just think they listed the top 10 players. I'm just going to say this and we're going to get a move on. You can mark it down. Kayla Williams, he is for sure, no matter what happens, he's going to be a top 10 pick. Marvin Harrison Jr., he's going to be a top 10 pick. 
Drake May, unless something crazy happens. He's going to be a top 10 pick. Same thing for Brock Bowers and same thing for Kool-Aid McKinstry. Oh yeah, and Quinn Ewers, I would say at this point in time, I do expect him to be a top 10 pick. My biggest question about all this is, and I can't wait to see how this unfolds, is I want to know just how high is Marvin Harrison Jr. going to go? The last time we saw a receiver go in the top three, I believe it was Amari Cooper, wasn't it? He went number three to the Raiders. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. won't go number one, a quarterback will go number one, but man... I'm not sold on the fact that he won't go number two. Maybe that's too high, but I also wouldn't be shocked if Brock Bowers from Georgia, if he went number two or number three. That's going to be something to keep your eyes on because next year, you're going to have a lot of star power on offense outside of the quarterback position. It's really just going to depend on what team gets what pick because you never know what's going to happen. Somebody that has a number two pick, they may need a quarterback or they may need a wide receiver. You never know. I do want to share that with y'all. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. But now, finally, moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. We got to talk about what in the world is going on with good old Nebraska and Casey Thompson and Matt Rule. Oh, man, you hate to see it. You really do. I can't believe he wound up transferring, but a couple days ago, Casey Thompson, he announced he's entering the portal. If I'm a Nebraska fan, this really, and I mean really concerns me, because Casey Thompson was a good quarterback, but now he's leaving. And last year, y'all had a good quarterback, and you sucked. But now, you're just going to suck, and you have no quarterback. And his numbers don't even do it justice, but I'm going to show it to y'all to give you some perspective. He had 2,400 passing yards, 17 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, QBR is 64.5. Not bad. I'd label him as good, and I'll explain why. If you watched Nebraska play last year, you know what I'm talking about. I watched every single game. And the one thing I can tell you is, Casey Thompson, he was good. But unfortunately, he had one of, if not the worst offensive lines in the country. It was that bad. This man had zero time to pass. And I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If you don't have time to pass, you're not going to look good. We see it all the time in the pros. The best quarterbacks out there, when they don't have time to pass, even they look awful. But still, with Casey Thompson having one of the worst O-lines in the country, he still somehow made the best out of it. Am I trying to convince you that Thompson was on the level of a Caleb Williams, a CJ Stroud, or Bryce Young? No, I'm not. But what I am saying is, he was good. He was a good quarterback option to have back there, and now he's leaving. For me, this is where the questions start to arise. Okay, why did he leave? Because I thought it was a match made in heaven. Casey Thompson, you're finally getting an offensive-minded head coach and a quarterback coach in Matt Rule. But now he's deciding to leave, so it can only be one of two things. Number one, he realized things are not going to get better at Nebraska and he can thrive and succeed somewhere else. Or, and I don't think this is the case, but some people have brought it up, Jeff Sims, the other quarterback who has came in from Georgia Tech, he is going to beat him out for the job, so that's why he's leaving. Me personally, and this is just me, I have an extremely hard time believing that. I'm not going to say Jeff Sims was bad last year, but he was far from average. You can compare the numbers for yourself. Last year, 1,000 passing yards, 5 touchdowns, 3 INTs, but here's the most important part because those passing numbers, it's not a large sample size. QBR of 44, 102nd in the country. Men lie, women lie, but numbers never lie. It's not even close in my opinion, and not just a numbers thing, but I've watched both of them play. Casey Thompson, I choose him every day. And for that reason right there, Casey Thompson not only beats him in the eye test, but in the number test as well, I have a hard time believing that Jeff Sims has beat this guy out for the job. I just feel like Casey Thompson believes he can go somewhere else and thrive. And you know where that place is? Well, why don't you take a look at Casey Thompson's Instagram story here. You see that sign right there? Sweet home Alabama. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. Not what you're thinking, not what you're thinking. Not the University of Alabama, but Auburn, its neighbor. Well, Auburn and Alabama ain't really close, but they're in the same state. You get what I'm trying to say. It's really looking like Casey Thompson will be joining that Auburn team. That's a different video for a different day, but man, that would be a crazy fit. Him and Hugh Freeze, watch out. What have I told you guys? That's the biggest problem with Auburn and Hugh Freeze. They don't have a good quarterback. Robbie Ashford seems like a good kid, but he's not going to get the job done. They need a guy who can pass the ball, and Casey Thompson can do that. It just feels like Casey Thompson is that typical sort of reckless gunslinger quarterback that Hugh Freeze loves. Dating back to Ole Miss, Bo Wallace, high-risk, high-reward quarterback. Uh, who else? Chad Kelly, high-risk, high-reward quarterback. I thought Casey Thompson and Matt Rule were a match made in heaven, but I've changed my mind. This is the actual match made in heaven. This is the perfect fit. At this point in time, I would say there's about a 98% chance he commits to Auburn within the next 48, 72 hours. Although I think Auburn is the undisputed frontrunner here, another school that's in the mix of things, and I think it is a two-horse race, is Florida. If you haven't been keeping up with the Florida quarterback situation, we've talked a little bit about it, and uh, well, that's a nice way to put this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not very good. I'll try to make a long story short. Casey Thompson, the benefit to going to Florida, and this is a real large benefit, 
is he'd start right away. There's no competition. But apparently, Florida's head coach, Billy Napier, he is sold. He is totally sold on Graham Mertz. He originally came out and stated Graham Mertz was the number one quarterback in the transfer portal. But Mertz hasn't been doing so hot in spring practice. So Casey Thompson, if he would want to go there, that'd probably be an easier job to win. Because at Auburn, you're going to have to battle it out with Robbie Ashford. Although I don't think Robbie Ashford is the answer, I don't think he's going to walk into Auburn and just immediately be crowned the starting quarterback. He's going to have to earn it. Because Ashford ain't bad. He can get the job done. For example, if Robbie Ashford was the quarterback for Florida, I think Florida fans, they'd be going crazy because he's a decent player. I'm just saying more so well for Auburn standards, you know, they expect to beat Alabama. They expect to win 10 games a year, and I don't think Robbie Ashford can do that much. So that's what it's going to come down to. Does Thompson want to go to Florida and have an easier chance of winning the job? Or does he want to go to Auburn where it's going to be a little bit harder, but you're going to get a better reward? Because Auburn, they can be good in probably a year or two. Florida, they're still a long ways away, at least in my humble opinion. I don't want to speak on this too much because we'll talk about this in the days to come. But let's just say I got a couple sources down there in Auburn and... The meetings and the visit, it's been going pretty well. Per usual, we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down below, but uh, I will believe.